Okay, today we're gonna do another network diagram problem where we're trying to find the general, the general solution of the network flow. I did a similar problem in my last video. Video, pretty much, we're trying to find a quantity of some material going through some network. For this, you can think of this as like one-way streets, and you're trying to find a quantity of cars. So this has many applications in engineering, economics, and so on. So the first thing you want to do here is to recognize that these are nodes or junctions as you can call them and you have a certain amount of a certain amount of quantity of material going into these junctions or going out of these junctions. So for our junctions for example are A, B, C, D, and E and F. So the first thing you want to do is we're gonna say erases Let's go ahead and write down all our junctions. So we have A, junction A, junction B, junction C, junction D, junction E, and junction F. Okay. And um, we're trying to calculate what flows in. So Another important concept here, I mentioned this in the before video, is that total flow out of this network has to equal total flow in, in this network. So that's a very important concept. So we're going to say what flows into this network has to flow out of this network. Okay, so let's start at junction A, or node A. So what goes into node A looks like just X1. What goes out of node A looks like 100 plus x2. So x1 has to equal 100 plus x sub 2. So inflow has to equal outflow. Now let's go to node B. For node B, what goes, in, what goes into node B looks like 50 plus x2. So we're going to say 50 plus x2 equals what flows out of node B and that looks like just x3 x3 node C what flows into node C looks like just uh, x3 so we're going to say what flows into C is x3 what flows out of node C looks like 120 plus x4 so equals 120 plus x sub 4. Now we go to D. What flows into D is just looks like just x4. x sub 4, we say x4 equals what flows out of node D. Oh, I'm sorry, x4 and a plus 150, right? That, that's what flows into node D. Now what flows out of node D looks like just x5. Now to node E, what flows into node E looks like just uh, x5. What flows out of um, uh, node E looks like 80 plus uh, x sub 6. 80 plus x sub 6. Finally, um, Node F, what flows into node F? Looks like just X6. X6 and 100, I'm sorry, plus 100. Equals what flows out of node F, which is just X1. So finally, we have a system of equations here. Now, our next step is to subtract everything from this side to over here and to put it into augmented matrix and solve. So when we do that, so when we put it into an augmented matrix, so we had 
called this the matrix. You have one, negative one, zero, 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 one hundred, zero, one, negative one, zero, 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 negative fifty. Zero, zero, one, negative one, zero, zero, hundred twenty. And we have for the fourth row we have um, zero, 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 one, negative one. zero and negative 150. Now for the fifth column we have zero, 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 one, negative one, and eighty. And for the final row we have negative one, zero, 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 another zero, one, and a hundred. So now we have to solve the system by row reducing. And I'm assuming you already know how to do that, but if you have a trouble figuring out how I got into this form, well, if you remember from early on, if you rewind, this was our node A, our node B, our node C, our node D, our node E, and our node F. And this whole thing was our flow in. And this one here was our flow out, right? So I just simply moved everything from that, from the flow out equation to the flow in equation. And the flow out equation just has the constants of what this sh should equal this. And these variables should equal these variables. These variables should equal these constants. So that's how I got it into this form. And the reason why there's zeros here is because that we have, we have to count for every single um, for every single uh, variable that we're trying to, that, that's in our equation. For example, we had uh, six variables here, right? So we're gonna have to have six variables for every single for every single row. That's why we have zeros. Because sometimes for our flow and our flow out equations previously, some of the um, equations didn't have a x three and x four. So, but we still have to count for it by by, by placing zeros. So that's the reason why I place the zeros and. Um, Looks like I'm out of time for YouTube's 10 minute limit, so I'm gonna make a second video, part two, finishing this problem. It should be right after this one.